Hello, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to Vitor Pordeu's uh, channel in YouTube. Today we are doing another international uh, interview with a very special person that has worked in the Dionysus Theater in, in, in Montreal upon my, my stay in Montreal, and that's Louise Rosenberg. Hello, Louise. Hi, you welcome. Tom. Hello. Thank you. Uh, Louise Rosenberg, we had uh, the great opportunity of working together in, in Montreal, in Canada. And Louise, she's a retired uh, social uh, assistant. How do you call it? Uh, social, social worker. worker. Uh, in, Bra in Brazilian, it's assistant. Uh, a social worker in mental health, has worked many, many years in uh, mental health care in hospital and in, in psychiatric hospitals in, in, in Quebec. And uh, she got involved into autobiographic research. And, and then she became an actress in the Dionysus Theater. And we have worked from uh, the end of 2000, uh, 2015 <laughs> until the uh, uh, beginning of 2018. And that were almost three years. And we, we played a lot. So, Luis, be welcome. Please tell a word about yourself to our public. And, 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 and this is going to be a dialogue, an open dialogue yes. Yes. about our life and our moment. Yes. Well, thank you for, your, for inviting me, Vitor. And, and I know that uh, your friends here in Montreal are happy also maybe to hear a few words from you, uh, how you're doing through this, this pandemic. And we know that you play in the streets and on the beach and, and in the Rio. And I can't imagine what it must be like, you know, to not be able to be outside in Rio de Janeiro. Yes. You know, having been there, I, I can't imagine. So no, can tell us a bit how yeah, we keep walking in the beach. We keep walking and, and doing exercise. That was not forbidden, but the beach is is, uh, is forbidden, and and uh, it's very crazy. I'm, I'm I'm feeling in a very mad moment where all the psychic referentials are inverted. Where I remember a lot from the opening of Macbeth, when when Shakespeare puts the fair is foul and the foul is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it is in voice fucking inverted, motherfuckers. Don't you see that you put them upside down? And isn't it? The yeah, we're all upside down. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's upside down. Everything is Nothing upside. makes sense. Nothing makes sense. And there is this oh. uh, uh, the fair and the foul always making me think about the feminine and the masculine. How yeah. it is inverted, how it is confused. There is a war yeah, between the, the masculine and the feminine instead of the sacred union. We worked so much. Yeah. yeah. This isn't Louis. Yeah. Yeah. And that was for me, that was the, the great discovery on the process that I went through. Uh, through my research and my uh, and playing with you, it was it, it was a and it, it started um, a good five six years ago. Yeah, and uh, when I started, uh, I, I I was going through a stage of life, you know, that a transition in my life, and I needed to ritualize it, and I, I putting it into research was a way of ritualizing it. And as I was problematizing this stage of life for me, it was a passage from being a, a professional social worker in psychiatry and, and stopping that and, and, you know, to do other things. And uh, I was in my mid-60s mid at the time, and I wanted to become, a, you know, a happy old woman, you know. I'm saying I'm entering a new stage of life. And it, there's such a lack of ritual in our society that we need to create ritual to help us through these, these life cycles and these passages. And that's what it was for me. And so when I started my research, it's through the writing, the performative writing, that I, I started to get in touch with parts of me and, you know, that, uh, that were still hurting, that I had not resolved. And it, it became increasingly clear that it was a feminine side of myself that had been denied, you know. And so as I was problematizing my research, 
all kinds of synchronicities actually led me to Dionys Theater, meeting you, Dionys Theater. And then I saw the potential to help me through this passage. And, uh, and, and meeting the, uh, and we started with Dionysus, didn't we? And that was, uh, that was my, my a kind of initiation into uh, Dionys Theater. And uh, it was getting in touch also with that part of me, that child that plays the actress in me that I had put away for so many years. You know, when I was young, I used to do theater and I had cut off from that completely. And, uh, and it was also getting in touch with, it was, it was a way also of deconstructing a bit. It's like, you know, stopping to, to live in our heads like we do here in the North so, so well, yeah, you know? Yeah. So it got me into my body and started to feel through the improvisations, uh, through playing the back on, you know, starting to feel that freedom and, and but also um, dark, darkness that had not been dealt with, that we carry in our bodies, that's transmitted through generations and you don't even know it's there. Yeah. So it's playing, it's actually playing and being in relation. It was really, really uh, remarkable and amazing what we live in Montreal's streets. Yeah. It's, 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 it was yeah. magical all the time. I remember yeah. the first yeah. day we went to the street, everybody was like scared and in panic in the in the Mont Royal, and yeah. in the end we had this Chinese boy, child, Chinese baby, yeah. that with seven or eight months, and he yeah. entered and, and and sang with us and and, and yeah. played the instruments, and that was uh, uh, again I have experienced this experience, uh, this image in in Dionysus plays mm. here the last the last season, we had small babies like that with uh, nine months, 10 months, uh, one year. We had in every session, th this happened in the first in Montreal, here in Rio this last season, that was January and, and February and, 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 and December 19, we had this participation of very small child, which is a very challenging uh, movement for the actor because the actor who is in the scene playing and singing and talking and, and screaming and sometimes nice uh, scaring and this kind of stuff. But at some moment you see very small beings coming in your direction and they want to play the drum and, the, and you know. So it's a matter of sensitivity. You need a lot of sensitivity and improvisation. They say, oh, oops, now yeah. it's stronger than me. Now it's not yeah. Dionysius. It's yeah. stronger in that in these boys and yeah. these children yeah. more is stronger yeah. than me so it's time for me to let him lead and then he leads and that's glorious and it's they incredible teach us. they yeah. teach they us and what and playing, playing dynamics but i remember also those uh, those moments when we had that insight uh, when you were playing Dionysus and all of a sudden you realize that the child, the inner child was in prison and Pantheus, you know, was uh, the governor keeping that child in prison and, uh, it, it, and also wanting to control the feminine and oppress the feminine, the bacchante, you know, and Dionysus uh, being denied his divinity in that context and it, it, it was such a metaphor for our culture especially here in the north you know where the, the reason is is you know the god and science is the god we forget intuition we forget imagination we forget we don't know how to play you know we don't know how to, to let go and just be free you know and i this is coming back right now as i'm confined in my home there's uh, th this dionysian uh inner child that that is screaming you know for to to explode you know so this is to me a challenge right now is to find new ways of uh you know of a, of giving expression to that 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 part of me that is feminine and that i experienced as feminine and and that's that that actually i was thinking about that when you invited me to do this interview i, w I went back and i was remembering what i went through and when i encountered ecstasy 
in, uh, in uh, Macbeth. That was our second play, and it was our winter play, because winters here are so... It was incredible, too. It was glorious, <laughs> I must say. <laughs> I even so revenge it. I even revenge it from a personal vampire with my character. We can't speak in public. <laughs> I, 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 you know what? I was imagining you. I'm imagining you in Brazil with your actors, everyone wearing masks. You know, and just very, very terrifying masks, just walking in the streets. You know, yeah. but uh, God, no. But uh, yeah, the winter Macbeth was a really was really for me a profound teaching play. Uh, the witches. I've always identified with witches. I've always loved them because for me, it's the feminine surviving patriarchy. That's the archetype for me of the feminine that survives patriarchy by hiding in the dark, you know, because she cannot express her power, lives in a culture where the, that power is not recognized. It's, it's terrifying. You know, so she lives in the dark. And for me, meeting, meeting Hecate, playing Hecate was first quite frightening. I, I didn't know how to, to, I didn't know how to embody that power. You know, it was, uh, and I knew I had to, because for me, it, it, Hecate, she's, she's the queen of witches, she's the mother of witches, and she was, for me, she represented what I need to become at this stage of my life. It's a power I need to own. I need to really be able to uh, embody that kind of power and it's a power that i'm personally afraid of and i realized that it, it as i was playing her i realized that in order to get in touch with with that part of me i had to go through the shadow of the feminine and the shadow of the feminine which which is really the, the feminine that's been battered hurt burnt on the stake you know, I mean, that we have centuries. Literally, literally burned, yeah. isn't it? And, and, yeah. And the yeah. medicine was robbed from women. Because yeah. Because they killed all the physician women. Yeah. So I felt my, my, my body was holding, you know, all that history, you know, and I think it's part of every woman, you know. Uh, and so, and it, and it causes us to, to suffer, yeah. you know. If so we you don't... Know, I, I, I realized just recently with all this madness that we are going through and all the inner trips that we are being forced to do and all that, that those traumas, they end up making you less delicate and less sensitive and yes. less attentive to yourself. Yes. You, go, yes. you, you push your emotions, you push your ideas, you beat Yes. yourself you don't take care you are not delicate yes. you're not delicate enough with your with your movements you're not that deli de delicate with your chewing with the food you eat with the care of your own body with the relationship with your own body. so uh, uh, traumatic experiences particularly that we are discussing uh, transgenerational collective traumatic experiences yeah i see i think they they have this huge impact in self-esteem and self-image, which is precisely this area of sensitivity of your, your own body. And that's, for me, a very important aspect of the feminine archetype. Yeah. yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. The, the experience of the feminine starts within your own body and yes. within your own... Uh, our own sensuality. Exactly. It's, it's our sensuality. And it's also not only in our bodies. I think it's how we relate to others. It's how we, we engage in relationships with people. You know, because the, what happens between people, I think, I, for me, is also the expression of the feminine. Exactly. It's how we care about each other. It's how we take care of ourselves and the other. You know, so, so for me, that relationship was always present. Uh, and Hecate... Uh, because of what she, the power she represented, really made me sensitive about how do I interact with people? How kind am I with people? Because when you have that kind of power, the feminine power is quite mysterious, in fact. And I think it scares everyone un until you know it, until you can experience it. It scares, it scares us because 
we don't know where it, it ends. And in fact, there's something always mysterious about that kind of, of power, because the feminine power actually has no limits. It's something that moves. It's something that's, that's there, and you don't know. It's not something you control. It's something it, you... you you're in relationship with the world. You're in relationship with others. And you're not in control of that. So we live in a culture that tries to control everything. So the feminine is not something you can control. And to me, the witch incarnates. What happens when we don't let that? You know, she, she, she's scary because we don't understand. We don't allow that, that force to, to express itself. You know, so to me, that was and that's the shadow. We need to go through that shadow because we all carry that fear. OK, just to make an underlining, it's very important, this issue, because right now I am feeling we are all confronted by the dark feminine archetype that is yeah. is running inside the families, inside the communities. Yeah and people are poisoning each other, people are devouring each other. And, and, and so this challenge that you, uh, you are discussing about traverser ta ombre, to cross your own feminine shadow, and, and how that can be uh, game-changing, life-changing. Yeah, and, and also I think that for me, the, the, the outcome of that work was to recognize that the feminine forces and the masculine forces need to be married. They need to join internally for, for them to be healthy together, for them to be able to be and express themselves fully. There's no other way because, um, and, and I, I see all over the place, um, the inequality of these forces, the, the, the splitting up of these of these two forces, you know, where one is bad and one's good, or, you know, it's like it's projected uh, uh, all around. And, and uh, so I feel that uh, that's the, the, uh, the outcome. That's the outcome. There has to be this marriage. And for me, what happened was that I, as I was playing um, Hecate, uh, and as I was going through the shadow, I started feeling um, I started feeling that if I, if I really, if I'm, if I embody this power, it's very important that I understand that I can discern when to use it, okay, to stop something or protect myself or to protect and when to use it to create. Yeah. And I think that that discernment for me is my masculine side. Yeah. It's the side that thinks. You know, it's the side that takes time and thinks about things and will read and will talk. Okay. Uh, so that to me is... is I'm, the, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm, when you spoke, I'm thinking about Bertolt Brecht and critical distancing and the work of the actor and the yeah. actor training that we yeah. ended up playing three times a week for three years. It, it was a lot of work. Yes. Uh, in the end, as, as, as the work ended up, and we had a lot of acting training. Actually, we would play every day. Man. There was no day that we didn't play and didn't start by the play. So, so uh, tell me about it was, this. Okay. It, 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 it was part of my life. I mean, I, it's not something that left me. I mean, it was really part of my life. And I think that... Uh, I started owning that actually I had no choice. Hecate, you, you know, she, obviously I was the one to, to, to embody Hecate. And I, as the, if I was afraid, she, I would fall and crack my, my jaw, you know, I mean, I couldn't, <laughs> unless I own that power, I could not, I would get hurt. I would hurt myself. Right. Yes. Remember? I oh, but that's how, I, Louis, that's how characters, characters yes. work. And that's why professional actors are so damaged and so yeah. burned out. Yeah. Because yeah. They, don't, they don't deal with the characters in a proper manner. And they are devoured it, by, by it. It's imagine not when, me. Imagine me in a situation with Macbeth that I had to put teeth outside. <laughs> 
but like it's the, not for nothing. It's not for nothing that the English don't want to say Macbeth. They they call it the Scottish play. Scottish They're play. afraid it has. You a magic remember that the snowstorms as we were playing yeah. outside yeah. the snowstorm. <sighs> yes. And 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 you know we, we had the most incredible cast. Now, yes. The most incredible uh, uh, characters and, 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 and people with the most uh, challenging uh, yes. situations that we experienced all together during that winter, uh, that winter 2016, yeah. 2017. Yeah. And I had to read about the history of the witches in order to be able to discern, okay, yeah. how to, how to, to uh, use that power. And uh, that's when, and that's where the masculine also came into play. It was about reading and learning, you You're know. Writing the book. Exactly, writing also, writing, writing my research also was, was you that. You wrote your thesis, you wrote your yes. thesis, now, the woman's yeah. quest for her feminine self. Yeah. That I think it's a very important document in precisely what we are discussing. Yeah. How yeah. you uh, faced your feminine shadow through this process. Yeah, yeah. And so, and so you need to take the time to do that. You need to understand, you know, what, what your story is about and how, and what I loved about the, your theater and the way you do things is, is that we're surprised because you see you're using plays, you're using archetypes that we know that are universal. And as we're improvising, your own story gets mingled, you know, and that's where the transformation comes from. There's the mingling and the, 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 the meshing, yes. you know, your own story and that universal uh, story uh, and the cultural story, the, how you're made. And it really made me realize, especially as I was writing my research, how much of we are so much made of mythology, you know, and it's like it leads our lives and sometimes it's bad. I mean, you need to look at the mythology, you need to change that, that paradigm and the myth, you know? And I found that the theater that you do helps us do that. It helps us identify, you know, what, what, what is empowering, what is part of us that we don't see you know and that was culturally transmitted and so it allows to see that as you're playing it you're seeing it and so the research with the research and and reading about the witches it really became clear what i was carrying and once it's seen it's no longer uh, the shadow it's no longer empowering you it's no longer controlling what it was the character that's right you know so the character and, embodies the shadow so yeah. systematically yeah and yeah. the fear and the fear the actor uh, is afraid of the of the character in the in the play you know in the, the actor process and all that is the fear of the shadow if yeah he's afraid of his own shadow yeah he will have problems in, yeah yeah in the play yeah. but so if you play as a kid if you play as a one you know, as a you know ch a, ch a children playing you know, the lila the, the yeah. children's game, isn't it? Then yeah. you have no problem. Then you make, you know, uh, yeah. nice sessions of theater. And, and I remember people coming to watch and watching our play. And there was this guy who said, I never understood this play before. Wow. Yes. <laughs> he said, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. And that's our, you know, objective here. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Louise, what, and, and, and so you mentioned something about learning the history of the witches yeah. as an important factor yeah. uh, in overcoming your own yeah. witch, your personal witch or your yeah. personal feminine shadow. And Why? Being, yeah. yeah, well, became, being able to discern also, being able to own my feminine power, being able to own that feminine power and, and be able to express it in a creative way. You know, and, and that was ultimately the, the freeing myself also. And, and, but you need to go through the shadow to do that. And, the, and also Lady Macbeth helped me identify also what happens to the feminine if it doesn't have expression. If it doesn't find expression, it becomes dangerous, you know. So it's like you need, we need to see the danger of that, you know. It becomes self-destructive or destructive, you know. Murder. And there are many ways. Murder. Yeah, 
there are many ways that it expresses itself also in our culture. I mean, look, we talk about uh, when you can love when you love too much, you're 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 stifling someone. You're you're you know, so you can destroy things that way. You know, so the, 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 it's a power that needs to be needs to be understood. And, and uh, so that's what she gave me. That's the gift that, that Hecate gave me. To get to a point where I remember there was once that we played where I had, I had so much love for my witches. And at the same time, I understood how to feel that love without, you know, control, you know, and, and allowing the witches to be you know, and supporting them. And uh, I think that you also, the masculine, the masculine roles in that, in the way we play too. I remember those moments when the witches were around the cauldron together and we danced and, and, and uh, the young witches were just throwing things in the cauldron. They were just, incredible stuff was coming out. And you had that sensitivity to ask the men to surround us with music, you know, and to honor that force, to honor that moment, you know, and it was a profound moment. It was a profound moment. Transformation for everyone who was there. So, you know, and so that's where you, you see that, and, and that's what, what I, and I appreciated the, 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 that masculinity that can honor the feminine, which is such a rare thing in our culture, you know. Had to honor it and not be afraid of it and to be able to allow it to be and express itself, you know. And so uh, I think this is a, a very important presence of, of Shakespeare's group. Shakespeare's group was with us man, yeah. in this moment in, this, yes. in, the, in these issues because it's, it's their sensitivity. This idea of, of putting the song, nah, they, 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 you remember, we found out a lot of, we did a lot of research. We found out The Witch by, by Thomas Middleton. You gave me the play as a, as a, yeah. as a birthday gift. And uh, also the book, the book know, of the, found, the nurses and, and the doctors also. That uh, book uh, midwives, midwives yeah. Nurses and Witches by Barbara Ehrenreich. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we found out this whole plot of uh, stealing the medicine from women, of uh, yeah. suppressing uh, 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 we, uh, women knowing, uh, the knowing of women, the yeah. fam, uh, the, the midwives are yeah. wise women. And, and yeah. that was uh, incredible. And, and this idea of mingling, uh, and, yeah. and when he's seen, we, we sang that black spirits yeah. and yeah. white, red spirits and gray, mingle, mingle, mingle. Bingo, you, you that bingo and this, you know, this is what the problem is right now with this pandemic. Yeah. It's like you have you have biomedicine that's taking all charge of this, but it, they're denying the feminine part of medicine again. again. Okay, there's the, that whole mingling, yeah. you know, of the Good psyche with medicine. the body and the relationship to people. That yeah. you know, it's like. That's you know, completely you, yeah, it's a biopower dictatorship. Yeah. And, yes. and, 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 and the, the problem I see here in Brazil and I'm seeing in the United States and everywhere is that there is a fight. There is a fight. So there is no possibility of doing what we are doing here, which is collective composition, né? synthesis, thinking. Thesis, antithesis, and synthesis. Né? So there is no space for synthesis. And, and for instance, a work like we did uh, of, of, of playing Dionysus and playing Macbeth and playing Lila mm -hmm. would never happen if we couldn't compose and if we couldn't play together and if we could find this place of collective comp composition where anything is allowed and anything makes sense and anything is possible to be played in a safe space, which is the theater. When yeah. it's played with you know property with, yeah. with, with clarity, do you remember when we played Shakespeare that the children did the theater inside the yes. theater, the yes, play the inside park. the play, and yeah. and Pogaro, he cried this day. <laughs> remember, oh, he yeah. said, "Oh, I was extremely touched by the children playing the play inside the play." Yeah. 
Yeah, we were on the move. Yeah, it was, that was a lot of learning and learning and learning yeah. how to play. It was wonderful. And yeah. then I came to Brazil and yes. I played Macbeth in Brazil. A witch from the, from the fire. <laughs> yes, I remember that. God, it yeah. was amazing. And, it was... And, and, and you know, you, you engaged uh, with Dilma who played Hecate and this yeah. two working and this two playing and Dilma is an incredible woman. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah. I gave her my, yeah, we, we had this ritual when before, the last time I played with you, yeah. before I left, I took my, I took Ekati's necklace and I put it around her neck and it was a moment. I'll yeah. never forget that moment. Well, yeah, and I said, take care of the witches. She said, yes, I will. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was the job. That's Ekati's job. And I was so happy. It felt so good to, to be able to, to transmit that, you know, and that's also part of, being an elder, you know, and the, the wisdom of the aging, which is so lost in my culture. It's so sad what I'm seeing right now, the way old people are treated. It's so sad. And, and in the North, in the Western world, worse than anywhere else, you know, it's like, if you're not of the age of performing and producing, you're, you're nothing in this culture. So we are seeing now this pandemic is really putting this to light, how older people are mistreated and neglected and, you know, not even seen as human beings. And so I hope we learn from this, you know, because I'm, pr I'm proud. I'm 70 this year and I'm proud and I feel wiser. I feel that, that I, I have a lot to give still, you know? And so I, I think that, uh, and that was an opportunity, you see, and I, I'm very grateful for that, for, for that you, you gave me that context in order to explore that force that I still have and I still feel. And that's become so much softer in, in the way I express it and so much more sensitive to what happens between people. And I was so happy to be able to go to Brazil and, and transmit that to uh, Dilma, who I who was wonderful, Hecate. I don't hear you. Yeah, sorry, I turned off. Okay. Uh, we had incredible work in that theater downtown, in the, in the library. We had incredible work in the, in the pageants. We were all in the street playing with the beggars, a huge population of beggars. Then never, never, you never saw so many beggars together, yeah. and 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 we were all playing, and and then was this beautiful encounter between you and our and our cast and our and our crew here in Rio, mm -hmm. and and there was that day that you were present that is unforgettable. Then we, when we reached the the bottom of the cauldron, and the whole cast spoke about uh, childhood traumas and sexual yeah. trauma and, and it was like that I'll tell you that day was one of the most healing sessions I've ever experienced in wow. my whole career as mm -hmm. a psychiatrist and a theater person mm -hmm. because that day was a day that everybody opened their hearts and and, and, and and then we saw so clearly how we, we suffer everything together yeah. Yeah. and how we are subjected to the particular same patterns of suffering of, of, of sexual mm -hmm. abuse and, and feminine abuse basically. Yes. yes. Basically it's feminine abuse and, and then the, the, the counter attack which is uh, poisoning and uh, poisoning of the family. And, and, and this is, uh, I think, is the major archetype we are facing again. You know, there is this Faustian plot in the institutional level, and there is a, a, a Hecatean plot in community and family level. Mm. The problem is, is they are not marrying. They have to marry. They have to dance yeah. together. Yes. Yes. There needs to be a marriage between those forces between the masculine and feminine forces. Exactly. We all have to come to that, yeah. There needs so to Louise, be that. You, you published your uh, thesis, a quest for women's, uh, yeah. for women's self, you know, for feminine self, a woman's quest for her feminine self. Feminine self, in English, and in French. Yeah, femme, né? Oui. 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 oui, in French it's, uh, in the, well, God, I forgot it. Enquête yeah. d'une femme in case you swell feminine, oui. that they're both they're both on uh, they're both on uh, academia, 
they can be found. Edu, yeah. Where people can read this whole experience yeah. detailed. Uh, with uh, the, the playing of different characters and the, the proxies and the work and the autobiography research that yeah. you developed, that I still think that autobiography it's a very precious method in a moment yeah. like this. It's a very yeah. precious research method yeah. in a yeah. moment like this, for sure. In yeah. mental health, it, 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 yeah. it, it, it rebuilds Hippocratic anamnesis, né? the joining of the members of the person, of the family of the community. Yeah. So, so I think it's uh, very uh, good material Luis, that yeah. we produced. Yeah, yeah. And right now also, I just want to say, you bring up the writing, the autobiographical writing. I'm still working, accompanying groups of people in the, the program Sans et Projet B. And I'm, I'm going to be accompanying a, a new group this September. And I'm very curious to, to find out what the writing will bring up. Because the way we work with autobiographical writing is that it's, you, you're not alone. You're, you're, you share that writing. In the same way the thesis is given. You know, uh, and I, I think when I was writing also, it was always in relationship through the theater. I was in relationship with archetypes. I was in relationship with the actors. I was in relationship with my research director, Luis Gomez. I was in relationship with also my other students that, that uh, were with me in my cohort. And so there's always that relationship with the other. And I'm thinking right now, as we have this social distancing that's paralyzing us in a way, it forces us, okay, to find new ways of communicating. And, and I'm finding that uh, I know for me, I yearn to be touched and to touch through words. Okay, so, so as we can touch, as we can, there's a way to use words and writing can become such a powerful way of connecting and to continue to grow together and to continue to understand and to be kind and to be loving with one another. You know, so I, I'm, I'm thinking that this is a, a, a way to, to um, uh, because I think it for, the confinement forces us to be more internal and be uh, and discover part of our shadows sometimes things uh, that are left you know the so same we're problem more in touch so the need to communicate the need to write and the need to touch universals as you cross the shared. shadow cross the yeah. shadow you have to cross yeah. the shadow. But it needs to be put back in culture. It needs to be out there. So I think sharing uh, the writing is, is very much part of the work that we do because that's where the meaning comes. That's where we give meaning. That's where our lives, similar to the theater we did, that's where my personal life becomes much more than that. It touches uh, other people's lives. And I, I see myself in other people as well when we share our stories. Yeah. Like the same way when you... you you remember that moment when we, after the play, when everyone shared stories of abuse, you know, and that's how we heal. We heal together. We can't do it alone, Absolutely. you know? So we need to find other ways of healing together, new ways of healing together. What, what we are working right now with the Dionysus cast, and I want to propose to you, is uh, that we assume ourselves as actors in our own soap opera, and we play the characters that we want to play, isn't it? <laughs> we take advantage of all this fucking paraphernalia of, you know, Instagram, Facebook, fuck you, and YouTube, and whatever, and then you, you, you play it, you know, you enter into the scene and say, hello, I am the actor, I am the actress, and that's what we're going to have for today. <laughs> <laughs> and I played the best possible. <laughs> I see that you're doing a lot of work. You're using the, well, you always have. I think I'm you even use I'm showing my body. I'm even showing my body. <laughs> because I understood that. That's my ego, you know. It's my mask. It's the only actor mask I have. And, you know, people are very appealing to that. <laughs> So I'm, I'm starting the soap opera. <laughs> I call it selfie healing. <laughs> selfie healing, you know? And there is no other channel. 
I'm just playing with you. You're so much fun to play with. I'm just playing with you. <laughs> I miss playing a lot too. Is you imagine? What? You imagine we are not playing. We were playing three times, four times a week. God, it was fun. God, I loved it. It was so much incredible. Fun. You did like a, a two week artistic residency here. In a, in yeah. Europe. And, and we, we were in a very good moment at that moment. It was uh, uh, end of September, beginning of October. It was the witches, the witches month. You Is were it? telling me, Louise, I have problems with equity. I don't know what's going on. So I came to Brazil and we played. And the first time I played with your actors, you had put a, there was a, a witch being burnt at the stake. Yeah. And everyone, everyone was saying, burn her, burn her. It was amazing. <laughs> Let's kill her. Let's burn her. And I couldn't. I couldn't stand it. And I said, "You fucking asshole, get out of there!" <laughs> and I said, "You come down from there." And I said, "Run away, <laughs> run!" And, yeah, and then it, everyone. It was a came, revolution. Yes. Yeah. Everyone came, and we protected together that witch. That's true. It was amazing. It was a magical moment. Magical moment. And, and it, it was there. really. It was really the actress in me sometimes. It was really, it took over me. It's no, you are a very good actress. You play very well. You are, very, you, are very, you, are, you are a comedian actor. You are a comedian improvisator. And, and you may, uh, you, 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 uh, when we uh, finished the training, you were doing uh, impro improvised discourse. And you were in, uh, playing the characters through improvised discourse, which is yeah. one of the hardest yeah. Uh, actors' abilities to develop, yeah. and and we did incredible work, Louise. I'm very yeah. proud of all yeah. of it. And and the, I'm seeing your brother's work in the wall, and and your oh. brother did wonderful pictures documenting yes. it all. Jeffrey, we did video yes. clips. Was incredible yeah. how yeah. We, we we and we had an incredible community collaboration actually. Yes. Because we had participation for, of yes. people from all over Montreal. We played in the parks with a very diverse community, very educated people. I'm very thankful to the community and to Montreal for providing such a community of gentle people and, and offering the experience in the French side and the English side and my participation and working with McGill and with, and with Lawrence and with Jess and, and the work with Prise De that we were so blessed and to, when you came to, to uh, you came to Lucar to you know it's like you touched people. What you brought to us is so precious, Vital. You touched people here in ways we had never never seen such theater before. I mean, we don't see that here, you know. Or if it is somewhere, I don't, I haven't seen it, you know. But you were bringing something very new to us and and very revolutionary in a way, you know. And to and here, you like you you. You lived here, you know. It's like people live in their heads here. So it's it's a revolution to be dancing on, on Mount Royal in the street, you know? It's a revolution here. It's like something people never saw, you know, with the drum and it's 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 witchcraft. It's pure witchcraft, you know. And I remember do you remember on Mount Royal there was this religious group? Yeah. They, they were wondering what we were doing. What what is it? they asked me, is it is that voodoo? <laughs> and I said, listen, uh, don't be prejudiced. No, be, no, no, no. I asked you before you, that. Before that, I asked, asked, what's your religion? They said, what's your religion? Uh, you said theater. Uh, theater. <laughs> theater. And then I used it to do it. I said, no, it's a research for a PhD in transcultural psychiatry in McGill University. They were scared because. <laughs> <laughs> and then I said, "Don't be prejudicial." And 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 yeah. and, and this is not. Uh, yeah. uh, you, if you don't know it, you don't. You 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 get yeah. to know it. And it was incredible because we kept playing there. They disappeared into into session, isn't it? There was a day that we played behind the the, the statue where you have this incredible tum tum every we every Sunday now nah, with the most incredible drumming improvisation. Yeah. Uh, yeah, session that right. you have in yeah. Montreal. Montreal is an incredible place. Yeah, it is yeah. extremely transcultural, multicultural, mm -hmm. and 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 the kind of work we were doing. I'm sure that we, if we played more, that would spread and mobilize yes. a lot of yes. people. But any everyone who participated in that 
with us because different people came at different times uh, over the three years. Yes. Everyone that participated uh, really kept something from it. Brought you know, it, li it lives on. It lives yeah, on. Yeah. You know, you left a mark here, Vidal, and we're yeah, all very yeah. grateful for that. No, I'll be back because I keep working in McGill and I keep working with Jazz on Guzder. And now Fred Hicklin died and everything became more, you know, more serious and more, you know, we have more responsibility now. And, and we have a lot of vampirism in the field, you know, and there's a lot of challenging. But what I think uh, one of the most important lessons that I, I learned with all this and Brazilian experience and Canadian experience is the importance of some preventive psychiatry or as we call it, transcultural psychiatry, which works through culture that prevents the, the reactive. You remember uh, we had uh, actresses and cases that the person didn't have crisis while she was playing. And that was so meaningful and so important. We had incredible performances yeah. now of, of Samir, who was uh, revealed himself an incredible improvisator, an incredible actor an artist, no? he's, he's an artist, he's an emancipated yeah, sure. artist. Yeah. And, 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 and it's incredible, uh, the, po the poetry that Paul Garraud produced yeah. and, and, and everything that we had, the, the, the participation of Esther Thibault that was very meaningful yeah. and very uh, powerful too. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we, it is incredible how, yeah. how we, we managed to do all that. Yeah. And I think uh, today, Luis, you know, we are facing a very hard moment, a very challenging moment. We are all being uh, internally challenged mm. to, to, to overcome and to, to put it forward. And my feelings tell me preventive psychiatry. You know, we, we go for preventive, we go for mental health promotion. Without mental health promotion, we don't do, we do with whom wants to cooperate in that. Because otherwise, it's unworthy. If you're gonna get mad because of your work, because of your politicians, because of the journalists, because of the ignorance of, of powerful people, it's not worthy. So we, we can only do anything if we have this mental health promotion and preventive psychiatry work preparing the field. I see you doing a lot of education in your country through, uh, through YouTube, in whatever way you want, you, you, you can. And, but I'm wondering how, how do you see your playing with your, your act? How do you see, because what you do in the community when you play is very powerful work and it's very preventative. And I'm wondering how do you see that in the future? How do you see that? Is it possible to, to play in this context? Um, maybe people can make creative masks, you know, I don't know, maybe I there are ways. I think the, uh, we have to assess mm -hmm. what is the level of evidence and what is the science behind this uh, public space interditions and beach interditions and uh, uh, public mm -hmm. space. This is the first issue, yes. because yeah. it's very likely that uh, in, in public space, you, you don't need to agglomerate. We never agglomerate in our theater. I always tell, occupy the space. Don't be- There's space, there's <laughs> yeah, agglomerations. So this yeah. is the first thing. Always we, now in this such a muddy field, we have always to assess the level of evidence of everything. And mm -hmm. I think to play is always a solution. It's always possible. And, and this idea of an actor's method that you have to tame yourself, you have to tame your own body, you have to tame your own expression. You have to tame your own voice. It's very cheap, it's very simple, and, and actually it's very powerful. Mm -hmm. So this is the issue. I think the greatest danger now is that the population find out that with diet, physical exercise, music, and theater, and mental hygiene, you can yeah. live without the government yeah. and without yeah. those crazy people draining and, and, and stealing the money. So this is an issue. And, and we have to uh, keep playing in order to survive. We are going to make this soap opera, which is we're gonna record it in many different places. So uh, it's gonna happen. We're gonna resume the Arquador uh, uh, theater as soon as we, uh, we, are, we are, it's possible because the police is arresting people who are in the beach and this kind of stuff. <laughs> and, uh, and I think to play is the solution in the sense that plays 
play is structures consciousness. So if you play, you are able to structure consciousness. So the first issue now is to structure consciousness. I don't feel like working as a psychiatrist without my theater. I had to conquer my theater before entering into psychiatry. I was an immunologist before. So I had to con conquer it. So with the, my theater, I can move into psychiatry. Mm -hmm. And I can uh, formulate what I did in Brazil for seven years, a public policy for mental health promotion and for science education and medical education of the people. And they will stop being fooled by crazy ideas and madness and manipulations and all sorts of uh, psychotic uh, ideas that are circulating in the psychosphere. We are clearly under a mass psychosis uh, syndrome that is happening everywhere, even in a very organized place, educated, po uh, uh, educated population. The level of paranoia is very high and the level of fear is very high and the level of hatred is very high. We know this is the fertile field for psychotic breakdowns. And also one thing I have observed in my clinical experience that uh, neurotic crises often uh, are psychotiform. They resemble the form of psychotic crisis that is the John Wyers Perry uh, description of the ritual drama. Yeah, it's all the same story. It's yeah. just that neurotics seem more normal. They just appear they, more normal. Yeah, They're yeah. just a bit more in control. Yeah, you know? Inside there is all burning. Yeah. But it's the, it's the same yeah. story. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, Louise, I think we will put forward to uh, concluding remarks of this incredible talk. I want to thank you very much because uh, I think this learning you had and the thesis you wrote and the products that we generated and the documents and the research documents that we published, they should be uh, evaluated and they should be uh, examined in this moment right now in the context of the mental health crisis that we are facing. I published it in Facebook. We need now the work of the Canadian scientist Louise Rosenberg because <laughs> She teaches us how to cross the feminine shadow and how that is uh, important and healing and, and that you assume your shadow, you assume your witch, you, you assume your late Macbeth and you assume your uh, my general Macbeth planning to kill the whole family, isn't it? <laughs> this unconscious hostility, as Freud said, isn't it? For, I'm reading thought, I'm rereading thought and then taboo. By oh, yeah. Freud is such a great word. Such yeah, a I'm word. reading Jane Cull right now. The Ooh. Secularity. Jane Cull, with the, there's a, uh, yeah, I think it's called, there's the, this uh, foreword by Maturana. Oh, and wow. she, she talks about the circularity of life exactly. and how, and, and it's, it's also bringing back the feminine. If we understand the circularity and that we're all interconnected. Yeah. You know, we, we understand that the, this virus thing is our own doing. Yeah. It's, part of, it's part of our problem. Yeah. It's part of us. Let, let's, let's sing the Hecate song to finish, Luis. Okay, okay. Black spirits, Black spirits and, and white. Red, red spirits and, and gray. gray. Mingle, 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 mingle. You that mingle away. Oh, well done, I commend your pain. You pain and everyone shall share it again. And now around the cauldron we sing. My elders and fairies in the ring. Enchanting all that you put in. Black spirits and white, red spirits and gray. Mingle, mingle, mingle. You that mingle day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank so you. You know the song. Keep mingling, keep singing, yes. keep enchanting everything yes. you put in. That's the 
the solution uh, for now. <laughs> thank you. You, I, I love this. And thank you for this interview because it brings it brings it all back and it it, it brings it alive in the yeah. present context. Yeah. And it's so yeah. meaningful, as you say. It's so yeah, meaningful that's right true. now. That's You're true. right. Okay, thank we you. have to turn off the recording. Bye. Uh, Bye, everybody. Bye. Share the movie. Uh, subscribe to the channel and spread the word that to cross the feminine shadow is difficult, but it's yes. possible. And yes. with the right pedagogy and the right method, we can do it. Yes. Bye, Louis. Bye, 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 dear. Everybody, thank, thank you. you.